Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about preparing for the future, a post-COVID world and why it is beyond just digital. While we've all been battling with the COVID crisis for almost nine months now and waiting for the new normal to unveil itself, nobody really knows how exactly the new world will function and what will be the new normal. But there have been thousands of predictions by economists, corporate leaders, astrologers as to how that new world will be, what will be the new normals. And based on those predictions, there are a set of top skills that have been identified that we must actually upskill ourselves so that we are able to thrive in the new world. And so words like embracing digital, going online, technology, AI, machine learning, AR, VR, and even soft skills like resilience, mindfulness, adaptability, agility have been doing the rounds for quite some time now. While these are extremely important skills, the point that I want to really make is we need to focus on the foundation, the intention with which we are learning these skills. Skills are usually just a medium of expressing ourselves and the list of top skills have always kept changing every 10 to 15 years. When my grandfather started working in the 40s and 50s, Typewriting and shorthand was the top skill if you really wanted to be employable and if you wanted to get a job in the city. When my father started working, uh, the ability to be able to make calculations mentally and to be strong in math and science was a big requirement. We all grew up uh, with focus on different kinds of skills and we've realized today that many of those skills have become obsolete and there's a new set of skills that are in demand. And with the pace in which the world is changing, these set of top skills will now change every year. So the skills that are important today might not be the top skills that we require to survive tomorrow. And those might not be the top skills that we might require to survive three years down the line. And so skills are something that we can always learn and unlearn depending on what is the requirement. But I want to invite you to focus your attention on the foundation on which we are learning these skills. Today, if you read any report that suggests that these are the top skills that you need to learn, the language is something like, if you do not learn how to embrace digital, if you do not take your business online, you will not survive. If you learn these skills, you will be among the first people to get a job when the market finally reopens. If you learn these skills, then you can be ahead of the game. Then you can be ahead of everyone else. Then you can always make sure that you are employable irrespective of what the situation is. So the focus is always to secure yourself and to secure your future. So the tone is like, if I learn a particular skill, then I am securing my future. Now, unfortunately, that is not true. The foundation for the new world, which is going to be a much more evolved world, cannot be the same as the foundation on which we have been upskilling ourselves until now. This is the foundation of what I call as illusionary competition, which is the idea that you are forever competing with everybody else around you. And that is why the intention behind upskilling and learning these skills is to ensure that you stay ahead of the game and you stay ahead of everybody else. When your world is built on a foundation like this, your sense of identity is completely dependent on external factors and so is your happiness. So when a crisis hits, like when the COVID-19 hit, it shook our foundation and when the foundation is shaken, then all the skills that we've learned over the years suddenly seem irrelevant. This foundation of illusionary competition leads to the habit of comparison, which can be extremely destructive to our self-esteem. If we look at our own lives right from childhood, we were always compared to other kids around us. Initially, our parents used to compare us and then we learned that habit, picked it up from them and we started comparing ourselves to others around us. 
whether we were studying, whether we were working, whether we were in our friend circle, we were always comparing ourselves to somebody else and wanting to be like somebody else. What happened as a result of that habit is that we constantly tried to fit in to a particular organizational culture, to a particular society, to a particular family culture, to a particular social circle, to a particular circle of friends so that we could feel more accepted. Whenever we tried to fit into something, we had to change certain aspects about ourselves and in that process, we always ignored our true strengths, our true potential. We always ignored what is it that we are truly capable of and a lot of those potentials and strengths and gifts remained dormant and unexpressed. As a result of this, we eventually became extremely disconnected with who we are at our core. The other thing that happened as a result of this comparison is there were always standards of excellence that the society set for us and we forced ourselves to meet those standards of excellence. And not just this, but we evaluated our self-worth. We evaluated ourselves on our abilities to meet those standards of excellence. For example, if the person, the kid who came first in the class secured a 95%, then 95% would be a standard of excellence that we had to meet. It was set for us. So if we secured 96, the world would applaud us, we would become heroes overnight and we would falsely begin to believe that we are better than everybody else. And if we just manage to secure say a 65 or a 70, we would start to believe that we are not good enough. So as we prepare to transition into the new world, the post COVID world, we need to consciously relook at this foundation and work on changing it changing it from illusionary competition to what I call as real competition. We can still be competitive, but real competition is the idea that is based on the belief that I am always in competition with just myself. You know, today as mature adults, many of us would agree with the fact that each one of us, each individual on this planet is on their own journey. Each one of us is here for a particular reason and we are all blessed with unique gifts that we need to share with the world. You know, a competition makes sense if people begin at the same time and are going to end at the same time. But all of our journeys have begun at different points in time and we don't even know when they will end. So how can there be any competition between us? We might be living in the same family, studying in the same school working towards the same mission or working in the same team and yet our journeys are very different and it is because of the unique contributions that we bring into those journeys and the unique contributions and gifts that we come into this world with. So in a world that is built on the foundation of real competition, I am always competing with myself which means that I set my own standards of excellence I meet and achieve it and then try to set further standards of excellence. So I am constantly trying to expand myself. And during my journey, if I feel that I need to learn a skill in order to express myself better, then whatever that skill is, I will be innately inspired to learn it because now that skill fits in very well with the role that I do and that fits in and aligns very well with who I am as a person. So this is a very integrated, aligned approach that we are talking about. So the two things that I would invite you to do when you're trying to work on this new foundation is one, stop trying to fit in and dare to be who you really are. And two, look within and ask yourself, what are my true capabilities? What is my truest potential? How can I express it? What is it that I truly feel inspired to do? Why am I even here? What is the reason for my existence? And when you start asking yourself these questions, you will begin to tap into those parts of yourself that you have never known that existed and that are there for a reason. 
If you're in a leadership position, if you're a senior leader or a manager, then I would invite you to not just do this for yourself, but also apply it with every member of your team. Encourage every person in your organization, in your team, to actually start looking within. See what is it that they are truly capable of. See what is it that truly inspires them and provide avenues for them to express themselves. If you are a parent, then my invitation is to encourage your children to start looking within. Instead of comparing them to everybody else around them, let them start looking within. See what is it that they are truly capable of and how can you as a parent help and guide them to express themselves fully and wholly. Because in the world based on real competition, being number one is not about being better than everybody else but it is about being the best version of yourself. It is about being the best that you can ever be. And that really is the purpose of our lives. And so my dear friends, let us consciously shift our attention to building the foundation, to getting it right, so that we are prepared to survive, thrive and excel together in that new beautiful world whenever it decides to unveil itself. And I have designed a full-fledged online course which is called Design Your Life on Purpose which will give you specific questions in a very powerful framework that you can adapt and use it for yourself and your teams and which will allow you to discover your purpose, discover who you are and what is it that you're meant for and align your life to your higher purpose. So stay tuned for that. I will soon be sharing updates on that one. Till then, all the very best.